Kevin McCarthy dropping out of the running for Speaker of the House. Today on San Diego People, we're looking into the how, the why, and the who surrounding the election of the next Speaker. I'm joined today by political analyst John Dadian, along with KUSI contributor and 1170 AM radio show talk show host Mark Larson. Now, before we uh, get started, a quick announcement, guys. Even though this show airs on Sunday morning, it's being recorded on Thursday. So our conversation is taking place just hours after McCarthy dropped out of the race. All right, the big question, <laughs> why? What happened? Well, John? to be honest with you, for once, I'm going to believe the statement that he gave. I'm going to believe him that he's telling the truth. And he said he probably could get 218 to actually get, get the nod from the Republicans. But he said we need a new face, and the new face needs to get as much as that 247, and it's not me. I honestly believe that, and I think that's the main reason. It was strangely reminiscent of just a couple of weeks ago when Bader said as a surprise, oh, by the way, he tapped Kevin McCarthy on the shoulder and said, is there going into a meeting? I'm quitting today. This is about the same, the same impact, uh, deja vu all over again. But, yeah, it does boil down to the, to the votes. Uh, now, of course, it empowers so many other names which most Americans haven't heard of. Uh, so it, it seems like that neither of the candidates want the target on their back and no neither does anyone else except for the two that have announced well like any large organization the republican caucus does have different factions that are going on and so they're jockeying so some of the so-called real arch conservatives see this as a huge victory and they think they can get one of their own get it up but i don't think so because again you want to get as much of that entire caucus to show that you're unified yeah, again, you got 247 in the caucus. You got to get 218. You have know, the Democrats still out there. They'll they'll put Pelosi in the mix when it gets down to that. Whenever that is, because now who knows? Boehner could stay. Boehner still technically has about 14 months, and he could stay, which would be, I think, a disaster for Republicans right now because of just these uh, these other events going on. Let me let me put this in. We've got a soundbite from earlier. One of the things that we did notice from these candidates is, it, as I said, they both seem relieved when they made their announcements. And it, it, we if we could let's let's listen to. John Boehner first singing prior to making his announcement. Let's go to that soundbite. My oh my, what a wonderful day. And then on Thursday morning, Kevin McCarthy, with a big smile on his face, shocked everyone with this announcement. All right. Um, I think I shocked some of you, huh? Listen, we've been going through this campaign talking to a lot of members, but the one thing I've always said to earn this majority, we're servants. We should put this conference first. And I think there's something to be said for us to unite. We probably need a fresh face. I'll stay on as majority leader, but the one thing I found in talking to everybody, if we are going to unite and be strong, we need a new face to help do that. He looked almost happy that he wasn't going to be in the running. He gets the award, at least this week's award, for looking like he's just thrilled about it. It's uh -huh. kind of like when they take you in. This is the PR person's dream. You know, you're there, and it's really getting to be a scary point, and there may be other stuff that comes out. Who knows? And you're there saying, this is the most wonderful day ever, although that says a lot about Washington. He's been in Congress since, what, about 2006? Right. Uh, he has not had that much time while being majority leader. He certainly understands the ropes there, but he hasn't been somebody there for 20 or 30 or 40 years. Uh, there is a certain freedom when you leave Washington, as Washingtonians know. I go back, the target on their back. They don't want it on their back. You teed it up perfectly. I mean, Boehner singing and then McCarthy with the biggest smile you've ever seen. But let's actually go on a serious vein, and I'm sure your viewers know this, but let's be real honest as far as describing what position they're going for. The person who is third in line for the presidency. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a big position. This is a serious position. So uh, you've got a lot of Republicans that want that. I think you're going to see several names popping up here in the next 48 hours. I've got another soundbite I want to play for you, too, right now. Some people speculate that McCarthy's announcement today had to do with the uh, what is his comments on Benghazi and the downfall of Benghazi. Let's listen, if we could, to his original remarks right now. Everybody thought Hillary Clinton was unbeatable, right? But we put together a Benghazi special committee, a select committee. What are her numbers today? Her numbers are dropping. Why? Because she's untrustable. Okay, she's untrustable, but also, you know, Hillary Clinton is preparing an ad based on the fact 
of some of his comments. Already running. Be because, already running. Yeah. Because if she airs an ad and shows his comments, then she doesn't have to talk about her email gate and a few yeah. other things, etc. Yeah. When I heard McCarthy's comments, I had deja vu all over again to the famous quote by uh, Richard Nixon during the Watergate area, and that is, I gave my enemies a sword. Yeah. And that really was the first step that led up to today that he just yeah. uh, decided that he couldn't overcome it. Is that, the and, one, is, is that yes, why he's stepping down? And, and of course, and every time he tried about, I think, three times to clarify it, it got worse. I'll tell you part of the problem, and this is the wonky nature, despite the fact he hasn't been there as long as I mentioned, but I actually was on a conference call with him, was scheduled on a different item with about, I don't know, 15 or 20 individuals back on the day that Boehner quit. And McCarthy, that's kind of how he will talk in, in that surrounding. That's What he said was what, what political people will say when they're in their private meeting rooms, and somehow it didn't flip to say, okay, when you go out there, you need to make the case that Benghazi, as Trey Gowdy has taken pains to make sure is the case, that it's it's only about answers in Benghazi. Anything political, that's not part of it. So it just got uglier and uglier And from about September 29th to, to when this all came down on Thursday. Um, it happened with breakneck speed, and it really was self-inflicted. Without, without that, I don't think we would have seen this line, today. He stuck his foot in his mouth, and he gave his, uh, the Democratic Party a lot of ammunition. When you become a political aide, as uh, many of us did, well, I was quite uh, much younger than I am now, is your first day on the job, the first phrase they teach you, if you know nothing else, know this phrase. And the phrase is, what the congressman meant to say was, right. and that's, I think, right. uh, the minute he made that phrase, right. all his aide was saying, oh, God, how do we recover from this? So now, keep in mind, only Republicans have to do that most often. <laughs> Democrats, <laughs> it's an art form. You just go with today's truth. That seems so, to be. So we're that's, pretty much in agreement. That's why yeah. he decided oh, yeah. to step down. I don't think no that would have happened if it wasn't for that. Again, I'll go back to what I said before. Yeah. I do think uh, a small percentage of it was his realization that a lot of people, again, it's, this is a cheap shot to call nicknames, but a lot of people were calling him Boehner 2.0, Boehner Jr., etc. And I do think part of his statement uh, the day that he resigned is accurate that he thinks there needs to be a fre fresh face. That was the phrase he used, and I yeah. think that's accurate. Boehner also gave him the blessing on the day as he gave his statement, said, I'm out of here, and then you know, Kevin's a good singing. guy. I'm not sure Kevin really and, wanted and that. And that, that had time. to irritate the uh, Freedom Caucus. I mean, you know, those guys were like, uh-uh, this is not going to happen. That's, right? Absolutely, that's yeah. correct. Right that's on the money. Right. Okay. This will continue so, to be spun. So Boehner, so Boehner says he's going to stay on until someone uh, is chosen to speak of the House. Well, now, uh, from what I understand, again, unless it's changed in the last couple hours, uh, they, they, there's no date set. And so that really is one of the keys. Now, keep in mind, there's a lot of nuances going on, such as some serious votes are coming up that they need a speaker before they have those votes. I don't yeah. know what's going to happen. And nobody wants to be the speaker, the new speaker, when those votes come up, especially no, when we're talking about the dead limit, right? You have Hans Erling, who says, hey, I've got kids. I want to help my daughter with the algebra homework. You have uh, Paul Ryan who says, I'm not going to do it. There's a draft Ryan movement. There's other names. There's Daniel Webster. There's other names out there percolating. And then who else runs it? You're right. You can't move the legislation without the right people to do that. You can't just kind of wait till everybody decides to play nice. And that's not going to happen with the conservative, the more ultra-conservative caucus either. And the point that I can't understand is, again, based on the statements in the immediate aftermath, that McCarthy says he's going to stay on as a number two position. I don't see how that's going to last at all. No. All right, we're going to continue our conversation. We'll be right back with more on the search for a new Speaker of the House and the deep conflicts within the GOP. We'll be right back. It's a celebration of savings. Toyota Fest is here. Get zero APR for 60 months or a $209 a month lease on a new 2015 RAV4. At Toyota Fest, we've got what it takes. Toyota, let's go places. I used to think owning a home was out of reach. But Pacific Marine Credit Union made it happen. As a not-for-profit lender, they were able to get us a home loan at the lowest rate around. A rate that we can live with. Pacific Marine Credit Union. Open to everyone. 8,700. That's how many homeless people live on our streets. Your donation helps take over a thousand of these homeless neighbors off the streets each day and towards self-reliance. Believe in doing good. Be Father Joe. Register now for Father Joe's Thanksgiving 5K at neighbor.org. Hi, Kelly. I'm from Coit. Show us your dirt. Come on in. Look at this. Spots upon spots from grandkids, dogs, cats. My wine club. There's some odors from the pets and spots and spills. They need to be cleaned. Right now, save 40% on carpet, upholstery, air duct, drapery, wood floor, tile and grout, and natural stone cleaning. The sofas smell fresh as a daisy. My carpet looks beautiful. It looks brand new. Call 1-800-4-COIT today and save 40%.
It's a celebration of savings. Toyota Fest is here. Get zero APR for 60 months or a $259 a month lease on a new 2015 Sienna. At Toyota Fest, we've got what it takes. Toyota, let's go places. Welcome back to San Diego People. I'm Alan Denton. Today we're talking about the election process for the new Speaker of the House. Many experts say the current situation is so deeply divided, it's going to be a long time before the Republican Party can overcome this, at least for the immediate foreseeable future. Joining me today, political analyst John Dadian, along with KUSI contributor and 1170 AM radio talk show host Mark Larson. Guys, thanks for being with us. Uh, Daniel Webster, Jason Chaffetz, strong enough to unite the House Republicans? No, not even close. Um, again, they can get their, you know, 40-member caucus, et cetera. But uh, I think what you'll see here, within certainly within the next week, is several names uh, uh, jumping in that can get not only over that 218, but as close to that 247 to show the unified. That's what they need to do now. Mm -hmm. They need to show that forget McCarthy, forget Boehner, this is the future. I don't know if they're able to do that. Mm -hmm. Watch Pete Roscoe. That's a name that most people don't know, don't care about. He actually he served in the legislature in Illinois with the Barack Obama. They get along well, but of course <laughs> that's politics. Um, he's somebody who is very strong in conservative circles because of his national security stances, not so much on everything else. But that's what it's going to come to. There needs to be, as Kevin McCarthy said, the fresh face. But that doesn't mean, again, there's going to be a 100% unanimous response, maybe in a miraculous moment, but don't hold your breath for that. And the fact is the national media and the other political party will will come in to spin it as they're all in chaos, they can't govern. This is politics. Happened. This yeah. goes on all the time. It's just much more pronounced now in a 24-7 news cycle. What about behind the scenes? A lot of arm twisting to get Paul Ryan in this, uh, in this uh, in race? Probably not going to happen. Again, uh, I'm usually smart enough not to make yeah, predictions. He's, he's probably the only one that could pull them together, isn't he? I, I think he could, but again, his statements b b before about well, the possibility when McCarthy was still in was that somebody needs to do it who's an empty nester, and I think he was right. being, again, quite honest also. And that's not Paul uh, Ryan. You know, and this is why I like the guy. i um, big fan of Paul Ryan's because family comes first. And he's in a hugely powerful position as it is in terms of handling Very the purse point. string there, and that's what Congress has to do. And in fact, uh, at all levels, the whole leadership team on the Republican majority side has to be uh, has to be consistently strong in a different way. Remember, this is the largest Republican majority in the House since 1928, right. which is why the conservatives and especially the ultra conservatives are ticked off and tired of waiting. It feels like the last election was five or ten years ago, not just 2014. So they're yeah. saying, come on, get with it, and, yeah. and, and you, you can't just sit and wait. As far as this issue about all the Republicans in disarray, famous quote in history, which uh, uh, was originally said about Democrats at the place of both parties, and that is by the famous Will Rogers, I don't belong to a political, an organized political party, I'm a Democrat. Uh -huh. So it, it, this happens. I mean, this is not a surprise. Isn't it good to get this out now uh, than wait till later as we get into the presidential election Great season, full swing next year? Let's get the Again, dirty laundry, let's get all the arguing it. over with now. Well, that works for the Clintons. You know, their, their way that they do it, you bring up something once, and even though the questions weren't answered, then, then Bill and Hillary have said over the years, well, that's all been dealt with, which normally means it came up once, make it go away. The Republicans tend to be haunted by such things forever. So it'll be, look at what happened to Rick Perry. Right. I mean, every time he got into the whole race this year, it was, remember, he couldn't remember the third point yeah. last time. So it's a difference in the and spin. When we're talking about a House speaker, let's be, be clear, it doesn't have to be someone within the House. It no. can be a business person outside who is not in politics, right? But I think the only time that happened was, I want to say 1823. I don't have my notes for me, but uh, yeah, it's, it's very rare. There, there's always names that are thrown out. When Boehner was running, Colin Powell, because, you know, he's yeah. such a, a university beloved figure, et cetera. But it's not going to happen because, again, keep in mind when we talk about votes and we talk about 218 versus 247, et cetera, that's really what it is, is your constituency. To be a congressman, you need a constituency from your district. But to be speaker, your constituency is from when that house. Your constituents back in Ohio, wherever, don't matter anymore. So that's really what's going on. Well, and there are other people who have been strong. Daryl Issa came on almost like a spokesperson for mm -hmm. McCarthy after McCarthy's quick statement on Thursday. And uh, I started getting email from people going, hey, what about Issa? Well, Issa had been on the Oversight Committee and certainly uh, not, not the most universally loved, although 
you know, he's certainly good for our part of the country. But you're going to hear more of that. There'll be more of those types of. Uh, of so, some people even said Newt Gingrich. If you go outside, what am I bring Newt back? He ran it well, well until he didn't. Yeah, until he didn't. <laughs> Things fell apart. Which right. gets into the vetting issue, Alan, because there's a big push here saying, hey, Republicans, Democrats, for some reason, gravity doesn't apply, it seems, but Republicans need to do a better job vetting. Because after Newt, it was Bob Livingston. Mm -hmm. Bob Livingston had his own illicit peccadilloes. Then you get Denny Hastert. They Denny tried Hastert. to find the um, most low key, yeah. boring guy. And then comes who, dirt on Who Denny was effective, Hastert, and, yeah. and the dirt's still hitting yeah. his face. Currently, right. that's so, how, yeah. when he yeah. mentioned that a congressman yeah. from uh, right. uh, Illinois said uh, consider running, I think the Democrats would love that because they would throw the Hastert brush because that mm -hmm. still is active yeah, in the news. Well, yeah. but, 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 but on the other side of that coin, I mean, the, tea, the, the 40 uh, Freedom Caucus Tea Party members who are mm -hmm. apparently stirring all this up in the House, I mean, they're saying, wait a minute here, we're handing everything to President Obama on a silver platter. We're, pu we're not putting up a fight. We're not doing anything. He's got his way on everything from Obamacare, you name it. Mm -hmm. to, I mean, coming up on the budget, uh, the, uh, the, the debt, and what have you. So, I mean, are they that far off base? Well, the point you just said is, is where they get credibility by saying we're giving too much at present, we do have the majority, et cetera. Here's where they lose credibility is because of that first position, they support things such as stopping the government, you know, stopping the funding of the government, et cetera. That's when they lose credibility with the average, you know, Joe and Mary on the street. And that's what the problem is within the Republican Congress. But how do you negotiate with the president who, who refuses to negotiate only with Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi? That's right. Well, that's the, that's the rest of the story, isn't it? Because so often it's uh, the president does a marvelous job of going out acting like he's not the president sometimes, saying, well, Congress has got to get with this. Somebody's got to do something. He could pick up the phone. He could reach out. He could go down there. He could meet as other presidents have done. But clearly, it's better to do this. And, and, and again, what's different is the 24-7 news media cycle. We can't underestimate that in social media. Uh, mm -hmm. To break through that is very, very difficult. In fact, when you heard some of these names out there after McCarthy stepped aside and all these possible uh, candidates for the speaker's spot, the questions tend to be from a lot of the networks, well, now, what about stopping the government? What about the Planned Parenthood issue and funding? What about, uh, you know, guns? I mean, these are all hot issues, but, but the, they're concerted onto the, every candidate's going to get that. So isn't, that's part of the challenge. But too. isn't this a part of the overall big picture, the mood of the country that's going on right now? What we're seeing in the House from the standpoint of all, all the support that Donald Trump seems to be picking up now and the fact that he's an outsider, he's, you know, and, and, and there's, there's just so much dysfunction that people say, we, gotta, we want some change. You, you just hit on a great point, but here's what the irony is, is yes, you have the mood in the country of people for a top leadership position, such as president. They want somebody outside the system, et cetera. But but that is inherently the opposite definition of the speaker. For a speaker, you want somebody who is an insider in the sense that knows how to pull the levers of government, knows how to corral his people together to get something done. If you've got a true outsider in the speaker position, you're not going to get anything done and government is going to grind to a halt. And that's also why Kevin McCarthy's current position is so important, or anybody in that position, because the majority leader really works behind the scenes much more off the radar. The average person, well, the average person can't name the Speaker of the House anyway, mm -hmm. right. but that goes on. It's, it's all those other places in the yeah. caucus that are important. Yeah. Mark just so. made a great point. Kevin McCarthy's current position is county noses. When you say That's the right. general public, they don't understand what the majority leader does. He does nothing but count noses. When yeah. the Speaker says, here's my program, et cetera, where do I stand? Exactly. And that's also why when people get frustrated and say, hey, why aren't they doing what? Because internally, they know you could have a big show vote and then sure. go down in flames yeah. and then give a victory to the other side. So it's, it's, it's a, a tough job. It's a mess. And you also have a lot but of Republicans. somebody's got to do it. There's also a lot of Republicans <laughs> doing what Republicans tend to do, and that is kind of getting the circular firing squad here, too. <laughs> so it appears to be the it case. It gets messy. All right, we're going to continue right. with this discussion in just a minute. Stay with us for more on San Diego People. We at Time Warner Cable need to apologize to you. We no longer offer an excuse to stay home all day just in case the cable company decides to show up. We're making a bunch of changes at Time Warner Cable, including one-hour arrival windows. We'll also tell you how long our visit will take before your appointment starts. So now you're not stuck waiting on us. And if you still need an excuse to stay home all day, we've compiled a whole list at TWC.com slash stay at home.
The Men's Fashion Depot announces its two-for-all, three-for-all wardrobe sale. You get not one, but two Cavalli Uomo suits for an amazing price of just $250. Plus, you get two dress shirts free, two Italian silk ties free, two pairs of designer socks free. You heard right, two suits, two shirts, two ties, two pairs of socks. For only $250, you save $540. Come and see us and you'll know why we say price, value, selection, nobody even comes close. Nobody. A sleepy town with a bizarre history. I can't even begin to explain it. Can a federal agent and a local cop figure it out? Every town's got a few skeletons in the closet. Haven. Tonight at 1230 a.m. Only on KUSI. It's Ford's SUV Sign and Go event. Take on any adventure in the Ford Explorer with a terrain management system and get the bigger picture in a Ford Edge with a front 180 degree camera. Just sign and go with zero down, zero do at signing, and zero first month's payment hassle free. Ford is making it easier for you to be unstoppable. Drive home a new Edge now for just $319 per month with zero down, zero do at signing, and zero first month's payment. Only for a limited time at your San Diego County Ford dealer. Spoons, forks, knives. Good stuff for the one that does all three. The good stuff. Hot sauce. How hot. Lava. Life is eating takeout at home. Dessert. And a home that embraces takeout. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Welcome back to San Diego People. I'm Alan Denton. Today we're talking about the chaos in the House of Representatives involving who will be the next Speaker of the House. I'm joined by political analyst John Dady and along with KUSI contributor and 1170 AM radio talk show host Mark Larson. Guys, uh, will we see more of the same dysfunction no matter who gets the Speaker's position that we saw under John Boehner? Oh, I think so, oh, because, yeah. again, you've seen it for the last few years. Yeah. No, that's where we are now. I mean, we are a, a cranky country. So even, cr if, if, even if that person gets 218 votes, we're still... Oh, yeah. The, the days, the the days of, of placid, uh, get whatever you like, go out to dinner on Capitol Hill, uh, you know, Bob Michael on the Republican side, you go back to John McCormick, Democrat side years ago, and, and, and where it just sort of went along. And, and the Democrats yeah, are loving it. They can but, do what they want. Of course, sir. But again, to me, this is not, although this is public office, it's not that much unusual with any big organization. For example, on the presidential candidates running right now, Carly Fiorona is being criticized for being fired from uh, CEO of one of the largest uh, companies in the world. Well, guess what? She got there somehow. So she has some credibility. So when people say, yeah. you know, the, the speaker, et cetera, dysfunctional or you can't get to team voice, to even be considered, you have to have have some type of leadership capabilities. What's your best guesstimate on, on when we will see a vote take place for the next speaker? It's, it's got to be before the end of the year. It's got to be before they get to the holiday distractions because there are these big breaks coming up. You can't govern on that. You can't give uh, a Biden or Hillary just on, on the whole big presidential stage. You can't give them hanging fruit in the garden. Uh, politically to just just keep on running with that it's got to be because otherwise every day that goes by it's hey those republicans can't make a decision on this so that becomes a challenge i certainly agree with mark about his term by the end of the year because keep in mind every single member of congress the entire house is up every two years right. so after this calendar year we're in 2016 and that's an election year mm -hmm. and some of those seats because of the mood of the country aren't that secure as they were maybe two years ago so yeah they want to get back into their districts and they don't want this hanging over that's their heads that's part of the reason why mccarthy uh, for whatever else mayor may not be going around that motivated him uh, he did get some kudos for saying listen these uh, these men and women are going to go back to their districts and he didn't want to be the issue now that said there may be somebody who's more of an issue who comes along and is just you know more of the Donald Trump type or whatever but uh, it, because problems when they go back and we hope go back and visit constituents they don't want to be on defense from hello so, so the Republicans need strong leadership in the House. We're not seeing that happening right now. Uh, wh what does it mean for McCarthy? I mean, now that he's kind of bowed out and stepped aside uh, for his political future. Well, I, again, what I'm surprised that I've heard so far is that he wants to stay as, stay as majority leader. And I, quite honestly, I don't see that happening because it's kind of contradicting what he said as far as new faces, as far as leadership. But clearly, because he comes from the Central California District, his actual congressional district is pretty secure. One point that we haven't even touched upon uh, uh, yet, what a loss it is for California it that is. the next speaker oh, is yeah, not going to be. What, what, when uh, I heard Boehner's statement, yeah. I was just smiling from ear to ear, no matter who it was. Uh, uh, even though uh, uh, Nancy Pelosi is a Democrat, when she was yeah. speaker, she really took care of California. Yeah, that's true. Good point. So the Democrats yeah. push for Nancy Pelosi with no hope whatsoever. Well, no, I mean, it's already she's out there. She's a minority leader. She's right. there. You remember how yeah. she didn't want to give up yeah. the gavel? I mean, there's, there's still a driven, I'd like to get that back 
Yeah. It's part of her yeah. wiring there. The too. cursory review I've done of all the 435 congressional districts is I don't think there's any way the Republicans lose control of the House unless they have some real shocking congressional districts. Yeah. So they're going to they're going to keep the leadership in the next election or cycle. Or there's some other scandal that comes up. I mean, mm -hmm. let's face it. Again, we're dealing with human beings on the right, the left, Republican, Democrat side. There's always something out there percolating, and and if something percolates and comes up uh, that was unexpected, that can change things. The biggest game changer, though, Alan, is going to be national security again. Uh, right now, I mean, while all this is going on, a political intrigue, we have the U.S. basically, as the president has said, leading from behind and uh, uh, basically acceding to the Russians' air superiority over, over Syria with all the ramifications, refugees and everything else. The president and Samantha Power of at the U.N. tweeting, kind of like somebody ought to do something about this. I mean, it's just, it's bizarre. So all these crises are going on when political intrigue is happening on the hills. Let me, let me, let me point this out for just a second, some food for thought. I mean, the Democrats look at this episode that's happening in the House right now as it's all because of the Tea Party members, these 40 uh, strong Tea Party members in, in the House who are really causing all this fury and uproar. Uh, they're taking, the, they want to take the party to the far right. On the other hand, the Democratic Party has gone to the far left. The difference is they all agree on being on the far left. Right? I mean, this is not the same Democratic Party that it was 10 years ago. Sure, Let's face yeah. it. So if the Republican Party has changed, so has the Democratic sides, Party. Sure. But they have stayed united, being far left. To really nail it on the head to show you how far left the Democratic has gone is one of the major candidates for president of the Democratic there Party is it. actually a Democrat. But he's an admitted socialist. Right. You can't get further left than that. Yeah. The one who actually honeymooned in the Soviet Union. True story. That's, at least he's consistent. But that's true. I mean, you, you have all of this coming together at the same time. And you have those Tea Party. They even get branded with that. The, the Tea Party representatives. They ran on that. Uh, unless there's an exception or two. I don't know anybody who has grown into that when they got there. It's no surprise what they stand for. And their constituents said, hey, buddy and buddy yet get in there and do your job we asked you to do and that again has been the frustration they've seen everybody playing by the same uh, way it's always been played Boehner when he became speaker said it's been top-down management from from Pelosi and we're gonna do that differently and then it turned out a lot of it was the same old same old that takes people off it's why people get elected and frankly the founding fathers didn't want these career people back there they wanted more of this sort right. of you know everyday people getting into it um, when we talk about the Tea Party, keep in mind, we're talking about members of Congress. Right. So I use, I love my quotes. I love the famous quote by Tip O'Neill, all politics is local. Yeah. So you have a congressional district, roughly about 600, 650,000 people, et cetera. If you compare that to the presidential race, the two people running for president associated with the Tea Party, Paul Rand and Cruz, they're not getting much traction. So when you get on the bigger scale, is where the Tea Party loses uh, their momentum. But at Congress, because it's just that one congressional district, that's why you see these 40 members elected. All right. Gentlemen, I appreciate it. Interesting discussion. Fastest uh, 30 minutes I've had on San Diego people in a long time. We no could talk material ever. <laughs> no, we not could with talk, this Congress. Talk quite, quite <laughs> longer if we had the time. All right. We're all out of time. That's it for this edition of San Diego People. Be sure and join us for the KUSI News at 6, 10, and 11. Have a great day.